Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in the last video we talked about the union of events and counting the total number of sample points in a union of two events. And we're going to generalize that idea in this video with what's called the principle of inclusion and exclusion. So first we're going to just derive it for when we have three sets and then I'll show you what the principle is in the general case for however many sets you happen to have. Now from before, recall that from before in the last video, we started off with this formula, the order of x union t is equal to the order of x plus the order of t minus, oops, minus the order of x intersection t. Now say, say that t itself is a union. So let's say that, for example, t equals y union with z. Well then x union t is going to be x union y union z. Right? Remember, if it's all unions, we don't distribute. We can just write them in line. I don't need a parentheses here around y union z, back from when we uh, did our set theory. So just kind of copying from this formula up here, that's the order of x plus the order of t, but t is equal to y union z, minus the order of x intersection t, but again t is equal to y union z. So we want to simplify this down. Well, the order of x will just leave us the order of x plus. Now y union z, we can use our first formula that we had again. y union z is equal to the order of y plus the order of z minus the order of the intersection between y and z minus. Now we can distribute, remember our distributive law for our set operations. x intersection y union z is the same thing as x intersection y union x intersection z. So now I'm going to leave everything up here the same. I still have order of x plus order of y plus order of z minus the order of y intersection z minus, but now I'm going to use my original formula from before now. See, I have a union between two sets. Those sets are intersections, but that's okay. So minus, now following my formula, x intersection y union x intersection z, the order of that is equal to the order of x intersection y plus the order of x intersection z minus the intersection x intersection y intersection z. I'm running out of space here. So I'll, I'll tell you what I did in this step. Right, This last thing's going to be x intersection t, but here that's x intersection y intersection x intersection z. But if we have all intersections, if I have two x's, if I intersect x twice, I'm doing nothing different than if I intersect it once. Right, So I only need one x in my now three-part intersection. So now writing this all out, this is going to be the order of x plus the order of y plus the order of z minus the order of y intersection z minus the order of x, x intersection y oops not parentheses but this is still order minus the order of x intersection z and then I had a minus minus here so this is going to be plus the order of all of these intersect with each other, x intersection y intersection z. Okay, so This is called the principle of inclusion and exclusion. Now this is a, just an example of the principle of inclusion and exclusion for when we have three sets. Now you'll notice that this original formula that we had here, this is can be thought of as the principle of inclusion and exclusion for just two sets. And we see here we added the orders of each of the individual sets and then subtracted the order of the intersection. With three sets, we add the orders of each individual set, 
subtract all possible intersections of two sets and then add the intersection of three sets. So there's a pattern here and if we look at the generalized principle of inclusion and exclusion it looks something like this. If we have n different sets that we're taking the union of we're gonna add together the order of each individual set. That's what this first part is here. I'm adding together the order of each individual set. The second part subtracts the order of all possible intersections of two sets. And we're just going to continue on. An arbitrary term here, well, an arbitrary sum term here, this means that I'm going to be either adding or subtracting, depending on when it is. I'll be alternating, adding, subtracting, adding, subtracting, adding, subtracting, etc. But an arbitrary term is just going to be all possible intersections of k different sets, starting from 1, 2, 3, all the way to n. And my final term, because there's only one intersection with all n sets, is just the single term of all the sets. And actually, I made a little error here. This should be negative 1 to the n minus 1 of the intersection of all of the sets. Because it could be all, it could be plus, it could be minus, it depends on if n is even or odd. So for example, let's take for example the intersection of four sets. Let's say I have w, or sorry, the union of four sets, w union x union y union z. Well, by my inclusion exclusion principle, this is going to be the order of w plus the order of x plus the order of y plus the order of z. So I add together all of the single orders of each individual set. And now I'm going to subtract from that all of the possible intersections of two different sets. So I have minus w intersected with x, minus w intersected with y, y, minus w intersected with z, minus x intersected with y, minus x intersected with z, and minus y intersected with z. Right? We go through all possible intersections of two different sets and subtract that order from the total. And now I'm going to add all possible intersections of three sets. So I have plus w intersected with x intersected with y plus w intersected with x intersected with z plus w intersected with y intersected with z and plus x intersected with y intersected with z and I have one final term here. Here my final term is going to be minus, right? I go plus, minus, plus, minus. I'm alternating signs each time we go to a higher order of intersection and minus all the intersections of four sets, but I only have four sets, so there's only one possible intersection of four sets, and that's the intersection with all of the sets that I have. W intersected with X, intersected with Y, intersected with Z. So this number, whatever we get on this side, is going to be the order of the union of all four of these sets. Now this may seem to be more tedious than just counting it, but when you're talking about a lot of sets, uh, it's often going to be easier to break it down in this way using this principle of inclusion and exclusion. All right, now that's it for counting the unions of the sets. So um, in the next sections, we'll be talking about cardinality, we'll be talking about selections and arrangements, and particularly with selections and arrangements, everything we've talked about in these last several videos with events, experiments, unions of events, etc., are going to be very important for you to have these core concepts uh, with the selections and arrangements problems. In particular, uh, we're going to be using the multiplication principle a lot in the forthcoming videos, but we'll see you there.